Welcome back to the Hold On, I Need to Hear That podcast because you know what? You do. And honestly, bro, I'm going exp- to explain it for just a second because I don't think I've ever actually explained why I named it this. And I have the shirt on right now for any of you that want a shirt, just message me and I'm going to get one to you. I'm, I'm about to come out with, gosh, I don't want to say it like that because I don't know when, but uh, I'm working on a lot right now and I'm going to come out with like some shirts soon available to buy. But I named it Hold On, I Need to Hear That because – I think that there's a lot of people, especially college age kids that just need to hear certain things or they even want to say certain things, but they're too afraid. Like, you know what I mean, Hood? Yeah, I got what you're saying with that. Um, I think every time, well, every once in a while, everybody needs a reality check. And uh, it's always good to lean back on fellow uh, believers and the word, of course, but it's always nice to have. It's just, it's crazy. Like, being in college, there's so many people that have struggles, anxiety, insecurity, all these like crazy things, especially you're, you're so pressured at a young age, like just to have everything figured out. And that's actually not how it's supposed to be. It's okay to not everything, uh, have everything figured out. Right. And um, so that's just why I named it that. But I wanted to tell you all that. But man, enough of me, man. HUD, what you been doing, man? You've been in Africa. You've been saving people. You've been. No, nah, bro, don't say that. Yeah, you've been, you been going crazy, man. I haven't been doing that, but uh, I'm honestly honored that uh, the Lord put me in a situation where I can help lead somebody, but not me. It's only from the Spirit, dude. That brings up like a story. Um, I was on the way to Kilabomwe, which is in the bush. Kilabomwe. Kilabomwe. And it was in the bush where we were heading um, to go help this church get started and to witness a little bit. And so we're loaded up in this land cruiser, dude. You know, it's got the snorkel on and the oh, benches, the bench seats, you know. Mm. And uh, I know you were living life at that point. Like, I know that, like, I know then, like, I knew you were like, yeah, this is me. Yeah. And, but let me just tell you, I was, we were all packed in there, and, you know, oh. my knees, my knees touching another dude's knee, and the sun just is hitting me, like, me only in the back. It's just hitting me, you know, and I'm like, dude. Like, about to lose it, you know. Like but on the way hot? there. Huh? You mean, like, because it was so hot? It wasn't even that hot. It was actually wintertime since it's below the equator. Um, yeah, it was weird. Africa? Yeah, and in that part always hot there, or is that just, like, a stereotype? What is it? I thought it was, like, always hot there. It is. Like, the lowest it would get was probably, like, 70, 65 at night in the winter. Oh, I got you. But uh, anyways, we're heading there, and, you know, your knees touch another dude. You're like, get off me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, get off and, me. Uh, yeah, and so we're heading there, but I got this strategy. I'm like, this is what I'm going to say to him, uh, which is great to have a strategy because, like, what Paul did in Athens when he spoke about philosophers to appeal more to them, it's always great to have a strategy, but it comes to a certain point where it has to be from the Spirit, you know. Sure. And I uh, and this was a great example. We're we're heading to Kilabongwe, and we get there, and I'm like, you know, man, this is what I'm going to say to these people. They're all going to accept Christ. It's going to be awesome, you know. And I get there, and I read from this uh, passage in Thessalonians. Uh, I'm telling this dude, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And, and then, like, after I finish giving mm-hmm. my spill, he just looks at me and goes, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what, what did you say? And it's funny yeah. because – uh, in Africa, it is culturally appropriate to speak in their accent so they understand you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, here it's like if you like, it's like mocking somebody and so rude. Bro, if, I swear to you, if you go up to a country person, you're like, yeah, well, <laughs> like, yeah. they'll like beat you up. Yeah, they, it, it's weird because they, they understand you better and uh, eventually you get good at understanding them. So, I mean, I'd give you like the looks. I say, hey. Um, sir, have you heard about uh, this passage in this passage in uh, Ephesians? It's really great, and it could help you. You know, it's just funny being able to do that. And actually, my my team, like, we got so comfortable doing the accent. That's how we talk to each other. You started talking <laughs> actually, to each other like that. That's yeah, crazy. it just stuck, and uh, it kind of scared me when I got back to the states. I was like, I better drop this accent. <laughs> no, bro, I don't remember what. Like when you first came back, you you said something. Like you, you were you said something like, "Oh, yo, but I don't even know what you said." But I was like, "Dog, what are you doing, man?" <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, man. I was like, 
stop, bro. But man, that's no. that's so that's so true. Like I just think that as believers, sometimes we we try to do it our way, and we right. Oh, I didn't even finish the story. I guess. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. But uh, Hurry I'm, talking, I'm, just <laughs> I'm talking to this dude, and he's just like, "What?" You know, and just walks off. Mm-hmm. And then the next person, I was like, next the next little house, um, the hut. Uh, I was like, you know, God, this is going to be from you. Like, don't let this be from me, but from you. And then a passage came right. to my head and uh, I read it to this man named David and he accepted Christ right on the spot. That's right awesome, there. dude. That's so awesome. It was, dude. It was one of those, like, I want that right now kind of deals too. It wasn't just like, yeah, let's talk about this some more. It was like, yeah, that's, that's, that really relates to me. You're like, like, yeah, he's, like, he's like, I want that now. And that's, yeah. that's so awesome, man. I, I just think sometimes, I think sometimes we get so caught up in our plan that sometimes we can miss out on God's plan. Oh, yeah. for sure, dude. Yeah. It's definitely overlooked a lot. And, and uh, well, was- it's just like, I mean, we just got to go for opportunities every, like every day, like that gets presented to you. Like, and that's the biggest thing. I just, I think that, you know, we get so caught up in our to-do list and we get so caught up in like the plan that we have for the day that we miss out on those opportunities. Like, and it's just like you can't explain it when the spirit starts to lead you, dude. You just can't yeah, explain it. It just can. happens. Yeah, there's actually a passage that talks about that. And it's it's saying that to the knowledgeable person, the Bible sounds foolish because it is spirit led and spiritually discerned, right? Mm-hmm. It's like we can't really just comprehend this with our own knowledge. It has to be from the spirit. And that's so true in reading your Bible and in like Oh yeah, fruit, good fruit, bad fruit. What is he talking about? Like in parables, <laughs> man. We in veggie like, tales, man. What are they talking? Yeah, about? yeah it's like you're only going to get this if it's on your heart and you're praying for discernment in that. Well, you know, I had a professor literally this week. First week of class was this week for both of us, and I had a professor and he asked us, and I believe it was in microeconomics, which is a very interesting class. And my professor is really cool, and I actually told him to check out this podcast. Shout out uh, to Dr. Two, if he's on here, if he's <laughs> listening. But he said um, something about, you know, how do you make your decisions? He was like, do you make your de- – I don't remember what exactly it was, but somebody was like, I make my decisions based off of – man, I don't even remember what it was, but I wanted to say I- – I wanted to think. I was like, I want my – my decisions are, like, spiritually led. Like, I do my best to pray. And I, and I try to make the best decision based off of what I feel like God has put on my heart. And, mm-hmm. and, and I don't remember, I think he said something about, you know, being respectful of other people if they're religious or something. And he's like, he's a Christian and we talked like, so he's cool. But I didn't know if I should say that out loud because I was like, you know, I don't want to like not respect other people's religious beliefs or whatever. But that's what I was thinking in my head. I was like, you know, ultimately we make our own decisions. I mean, we really do, but it's like, I can do my best to make the best decisions whenever I pray and whenever I, you know, discern, you know, through scripture, through wise counsel and through, you know, praying like what the best decision to do in a certain moment is. Right. And um, actually, that reminds me of my friend, Nate. Um, He was 20 years old, bro, but he had like the wisdom of like a Chinese monk. I'm pretty sure I told you about it. Yeah. But uh, he was so knowledgeable about everything. And one of the things, he was a good dude that remembered stuff too. And it was it's funny because one day I was like, you know, Nate, bro, I'm not sure where I need to go from here, you know. Like I'm feeling called to the mission field. I, I want to go to – I want to go here. I want to go there. I don't know if I need to go back to A-State or this or that. Wish you and, would. That's just, that's just and me. he was like – um, he's like, hmm, hmm. And I was like, I'm not getting an answer from the God from God I want because I want God just to like like sit right here beside me and say, You're like, all right, uh, come on, do. man. Come on, you yeah. Need to you know, that'd yeah. be so that'd yeah. be so much easier. But uh it's not how it works. And uh I was still thinking about that and couldn't get the answer. And then the next day he was like, You know, Hudson, I was praying about what you told me. Well, first off, I was like, Okay. You know, appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah. And he was like Sometimes we might not get the answer we want, but what is the sharper out of the two swords? What will cut down more for the kingdom of God? And I was like, that's tough. Huh? That's like, tough. What is, I love is going to give God the most glory in this situation? And that's how I look at things now is like, should I do this? Should I not do this? 
what is best for the kingdom. Well, and, and I, I just want to say, like, I think sometimes in the midst of, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I go this route? Should I go that route? Sometimes in the midst of trying to make decisions, we don't do anything. Mm. And it's better to do something than not do anything. The power of doing something is amazing. And I know that sounds like cliche, but the power of actually doing something and actually taking initiative, like we've talked about, is amazing. Like it it doesn't matter. Power of now. The power of now. Yes, I love it. Um, Yeah, that's that's very true. I think you were talking about earlier. We miss opportunities just because we get so caught up in our world. Yeah. um, Now, of course, it's a little different. I know you're trying to decide, but but what I'm saying is, in the midst of should I go here? Should I go here? Where you're at at the moment. A lot of people, you know, they miss out on those opportunities that are right there to tell someone about Jesus. And, and I want to, I want to tell, well, are you done with your story? Yeah. That was it, bro. Sorry. No, 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 no. I want to tell, do you remember me telling you about the lady that came up to me and crying at St. Bernard's? Yeah. Okay. So this lady came up to me like for, sorry, backtrack. So, I wrote in my notebook, I was working on something, you know what I was working on. And I wrote out, what is God telling me to write? I was working on a, yeah, I was working on something. And I was like, what is God telling me to write? I kid you not, 10 seconds later, a woman came up to me with tears in her eyes. And I was at work, like, and and I work uh, at the hospital at St. Bernard's. Like, I just do a little stand for smoothie king from six to 10. It's just like, uh, and I'm still doing it now. It was like a little summer job, but I'm doing it now just for a little bit. I mean, it's just some extra cash, you know? And, Mm -hmm. and I remember this woman came up to me with tears in her eyes and I was just like, number one, I was like, okay, God, I'll I'll write about it. All right. Like, (laughs) I mean, it was just like, she just came up to me and she looked at me and she said, is that, is that the, like, you know, she's kind of stuttering. She's like, is, is that the Bible? And I looked down and I was writing in my notebook, my, my, literally just like this. My Bible was like out like this and my notebook was on top of it. In fact, I have my notebook right here. Like my notebook was right here and like the Bible was under it. So I looked down and I was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, I was like, yes, ma'am, it is. And she said, I, I just want you to know that I've had the worst week. She said, I've had the absolute worst week. This is this month has just been hard for me. And seeing you as a young person reading your Bible just really encouraged me and gave me hope. And I was just like, like I wasn't even reading yet, bro. Like I wasn't even reading yet. And it just shows you that like, like God can just take the smallest thing and he can use it for his glory. I wasn't even reading, man. I just felt so humbled in that moment because I was just like, like I didn't even do anything, but God, like use that moment just for his glory. And that woman, you know, when we talk for a while and, you know, she was in this bad place, I gave her a hug and I said, can I pray with you? And she said, yeah, of course. And we prayed and she just left feeling better. Right. And it's just like, like I live for those moments, man. I really do. Like, that's what I love right there. Just those, those all of a sudden moments that you did not expect. I literally wrote, God, what do you want me to write about? And what I wrote about after that, is the thing that she left telling me she looked at me and she said, cause I don't remember. I told her, I was like, yeah, like I've been a little discouraged too, but you know, I'm still like, you know, working on the podcast and other things right now. And she looked at me in the eyes and she said, don't you ever stop what you're doing? She said, never, she said, never stop what you're doing. It doesn't go unnoticed. You're bringing glory to God. Do not ever let other people tell you that what you're doing isn't right. And that's when I was like, okay, right about fear of judgment. <laughs> mm, because that's like, awesome. that's, yeah, but like I started thinking about that and that's a, that's just a big thing, bro. Like how many people our age are just afraid to talk about Jesus? You know, that reminds me of another thing, honestly. And uh, one of the things when we first got there was not seeing the fruit that, uh, that we put into it, you know, mm-hmm. uh, all this effort of like, witnessing and then just crying out to God, like just put these people in our path and we're not seeing like the results we wanted at first, you know? And we're like, why is, why is this so difficult? Like, God, we're here for you right now. Why are we not getting these answers? You know? And, um, one of our members of the team, uh, gave the story about Ananias, uh, praying for Saul to become Paul, you know, when, 
when Saul gets his eyes covered in this like snake like uh, film when God blinded him uh, on the road to Damascus, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he tells Anais, he's like, Anais, I want you to go pray with my future disciple, Saul. And he he hired, yes, I remember, wasn't he like in his house or something? He said, I want you to go and I want you to yeah, find this. Yeah. yeah. And anyways, Anais goes and prays for Saul. His uh, snake like flakes fall off his eyes or however yes. it's put. And uh, then look what Saul turns into. Saul turns into Paul and leads millions to Christ, you know? It's crazy. It's dude. And Anias' job, Anias' job was just to go pray for Saul. Mm -hmm. That was his job. But look what it turned the smallest into. Thing, the smallest thing. <laughs> and that and that makes me that makes me say, like, nothing is small for the kingdom of God if you're in his will doing it. If since he was faithful in his decision and went to talk to Saul, that right. led to millions. And that that exactly. changed, that changed our hearts because now we're like, God, if just one person here accepts just accepts one. you, yes, it's so worth it. It's so worth it, and we don't understand. Yeah. We don't. I just don't think that we get how much of an impact that has. One person it doesn't matter what it is, dude. One person listening to this right now could go, and they could take whatever we've said, and they could tell it to someone else, and they tell it to someone else, and it's just like, wow, right, just exactly. Like, Nothing small if you're doing it in the Lord's will. Man, COVID really opened my eyes to the fact that people just matter the most, man. And we just forget that sometimes. Like, we just get so caught up in our to-do list or in our plan or whatever that we forget that people matter the most. And I want to say, uh, I'm just going to say a friend uh, this past week. I had a friend that we started talking about Jesus. And I'm not going to give the, the big story. Long story short, I'm one of the only people college aged that has sat down and talked to this friend about and explained to him about Jesus and about purpose and about all these things. Number one, I was this is what it was. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to get a workout in and I wanted and I wanted to lift and I like wanted there was these things like there was my wants and needs and I didn't have very long because we had practice and then we had like other stuff. And, and so I was like, I don't have, I had like this three hour span and I'm like, okay, I want to go and I want to do this. But then I ran into this friend and I, I felt God put it on my heart. You stay with him. And, and I don't know why, but I was like, I want to go to the gym. I want to yeah. go lift. I wanna grow. And it's like, but then I, I felt it on my heart to stay with him. Bro, we talked for an hour and a half about Jesus. That's great, man. I was the only in like I was one of the only people that have sat down his age that talked to him about this stuff. See, this is the thing, man. A lot of people don't understand that having an adult get up on a stage and talk is great and it does help. But when you have somebody your age, somebody that's going through the exact same things as you, somebody that literally is living like like the life that you're living right now is in like you're in this state of confusion like nobody knows what they're going to do with their life while in college like when you have somebody sit down and talk to you then where you're both like relating and you're both actually like kind of in the same boat that yeah. i just feel like that impacts more because they look at you and they're like well he doesn't have his life figured out but look he's he has an idea of what his purpose is and like you know what god wants to do with him and stuff like that and you know what i mean yeah, bro. That realization, realization, realization came to me. Realization today, Junior. Uh, realization came to me. Junior, oh my gosh. <laughs> in uh, in Africa, like, what is the point of this? What is my purpose? You know, like, why am I here? And that's that's a question so many people our age struggle with. Like, that's the one purpose? thing I talked to him about, and he, yeah. he asked me because I talked, and I'm not finish your story, sorry, but. He asked me, you know, he was like, because we started talking about purpose. I, I just asked him, I said, what's your purpose? And like, because it, like we were talking about that. I said, what do you think? What do you think your purpose is? And he just kind of looked and he's like, I don't know. Yeah. And he, and he looked at me and he said, what is your purpose? And I said, to love God and to love other people. Right. And he was just like, and then one thing. Well, I'll let go ahead. <laughs> You're so funny, bro. But, uh. And uh, so the realization hit me that, like, what is my purpose here? And it's mm. 
literally the only thing that matters, dude, is God. Like the only thing. I mean, I don't think we a lot of people realize that. It's like nothing on this earth is even close to that. And I don't want I don't want any of these worldly desires like I used to. Right. Because it's no I, I know the greater goal or my greater purpose. For sure. And it's like that, you just don't want those temporary people. highs. Right, right. But this is what fulfills you and this is what gives you that purpose and that drive to keep going and to know that you're not in this alone. Significance. Like all these exactly all these struggles that I've dealt with. I would still be in that state of confusion and lost lostness if he didn't intervene in my life. Exactly. That's the biggest thing. I just, like I said, I think some people search their whole life for fulfillment in places where they'll never find it. I just think that people search and search and they're like, you know, this is going to make me feel special. This is going to make me feel special, but nothing, nothing is going to make me like me feel special. No one's going to make anyone feel you know, special or whatever. I'm sorry. I like to use the word unique. Nobody's going to understand their uniqueness and understand just how fearfully and wonderfully God made them until they dive into his word and until they seek him out because you realize, and I, this is what I told my friend. Okay. You know, the one I told you, I was talking to about Jesus. I said, think about the worst thing you've ever done in your life. So think about the absolute worst thing you've ever done and think about like, do you think that people would love you the same if they found out that you did whatever the worst thing you've ever done is? And he just kind of went, no, I, I don't think they would. And I said, now imagine this. God still loves you more, like times a thousand with, mm-hmm. like, with, with, with like the worst thing you've ever done. God still loves you I'll, like so much. Like he loves you. It's, it's unconditional. Uh, it's actually described as agape. It's the Greek word agape means uh, to choose the best interest of another person over yourself. And Jesus showed that agape love for us whenever he died on the cross for us. And it's right. like, God would still do that. Jesus would still die for you. Even if you did that worst thing over and over, he would still die for you. And then we can't explain that kind of love. And that's what I was telling him. I'm like, that's how much God loves you. Man. It's unreal. You know, um, you're talking about that and a lot of people find their fulfillment and try will try to find their fulfillment mm-hmm. in other people or these worldly things and they never get it you know they still struggle with that and that's because he is the ultimate love you know yeah so, and, um, and, yeah keep going keep going no you no you <laughs> no it, it's just like people like uh, we've talked so much about you know striving for significance instead of striving for success because Mm -hmm. success changes every day. Success Mm -hmm. is really dependent on what your definition of success is really. I mean, success could be making six figures, which I don't think is a bad thing. I really don't think that's a bad thing, but it's like if that, if my identity is consumed in money or people might say success is, you know, winning three NBA championships, people might say success is this people might say Success changes every day, dog. It's never the same. One day, the end thing is donating to the poor. The next is spending all your money at the club. Who knows? Like, and that's why I'm saying this significance has to do with other people. Success is not going to be fulfilling. No matter what you do, you can get everything you've ever wanted, and it won't be fulfilling. That's why striving for significance and striving for impact of other people is actually going to be fulfilling when you do something for Jesus. Right. And I mean, you look at like celebrities and everybody on those social statuses that struggle with depression, suicide. I mean, it's just, that's not going to bring you to happiness. They turn to alcohol. Right. Right. I mean, it's just never enough. That's a, that's a big thing. And you know, people in Africa, dude, it's, it's unreal. Um, You know, a kid with half a shirt, that's torn out of pieces will come up to you handing you stuff or just giving you know that's amazing just you know that that's amazing a kid with half a shirt will come up to you and he'll still give to you right and you know their definition of success is surviving in a way um in some parts you know and they're just so excited to hear god's word you know yeah and and it's it's funny because they have happiness you know (laughs) A lot of times, well, there's definitely struggles and hardships, but when I was in, uh, 
um, it was close to Kilabomwe. It was another village beside it. And these people, they just danced and sang every, every day, just having the biggest yeah, smile yeah. on their face. And it was because somebody cared enough about them to talk to them about Jesus, you know, and that was enough for them. Yeah. It was, they had that significance instead of success. Yeah. And we overlook it so many times, like, just look at what you have. And, you know, it's, it's unbelievable when you start counting the blessings mm -hmm. that really change your mindset. Yeah, man, God can do so much with the little stuff you have. I remember when I was younger, my, my stepdad went on a mission trip to Haiti. And <laughs> I remember, you know, being like, I don't know, nine, or I don't know what, how old I was whenever he went. Uh, he showed me a picture of him like with this little boy, you know, this um, little African boy. He didn't have on very much. And I remember one he time. be a Haitian boy, but keep going. Keep going. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> Haitian. Yes, definitely Haitian. Sorry. But I was talking to him and I was like, hey, I don't remember. I think I got upset about something or whatever. And he showed me a picture and he said, you see this little boy right here? I said, yeah. And he said, he didn't have nearly as much as you have. He said, but look at that big smile on his face. Mm -hmm. And he's like, and he wasn't like upset with me. He was like, Caleb, sometimes you need to remember that you don't have it that bad. Yeah, like for I, sure. And there are people that literally are so happy with little and it's like, that's, that's why I'm saying that no matter what, like, let's take this for example. All right, man, I prayed for this thing for so long and this thing has helped me with everything I'm trying to do. This iPad right here, this has helped me ridiculously. But I remember I prayed for that thing for so long. And then my, uh, I was able, I was finally able to get it. And when I got it, I remember looking at it and thinking, this is pretty cool. But then I thought, this is, this, I like you know like this is not as great as i made it out to be hmm. not not no like it has helped me ridiculously and i tweak out over it because i'm you know technology nerd but i like looked at it i'm like i just kind of thought imagine if i tried to like make this thing fulfill me you know like mm -hmm. imagine if i tried to make all like these things that i want imagine if i was like oh my gosh like this is everything to me like it just would never be enough Right. It won't. And, you know, I always thought, like, what would I grab in a fire? You know, what would be the most important? And I'm like, I'd grab my Bible, dude. Right. Like, all the stuff I got written in there and, like, everything like that, that means so much to me now. It means more than anything, you know, because I was talking to you the other day about, like, the significance of God's word and how it's so overlooked. Like, I, even for me, like, that goes for me, too. It's like just throwing my Bible on this shelf, throwing it here, there, you know, or just not looking at it as much as I should because it is seriously God's word for us. And that's that's honestly mind-blowing when you really think into it. But just that head knowledge is it's a book. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this just for a second. This book right here, my Aunt Catherine got this for me for my uh, graduation. I didn't like, it's just like, you know, notes and stuff like, like it's like notebook for like taking notes for your Bible or whatever. Mm -hmm. I remember I did not hardly touch this thing. Uh, whenever I got it, I was like, ah, yeah, cool. And then, yeah, I'd taken notes in church and stuff, but man, you remember that awful broken place I was in. And I remember whenever I was just in this awful and broken place and I went into church and, um, uh, I, I just, I remember one day I just gave it all to God. I was like, God, I'm, I'm giving like, you know, everything to you. And I'm like, I just want to be, I just want to be used for your glory. And that, that, and so this thing right here, man, this thing went from not hardly having any notes. I went to 747 this, I went to uh, 747 this Wednesday and I grabbed my pen and I looked and I was like, I don't have any more notes to write in it. <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, I had four notes, and I had to pull out my iPad and start writing on it with my Apple Pen, and then yeah. and and I went and I mean, like, I bought a new notebook now, but I just I realized I I, I looked, and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have any more notes in it. I was like, that's amazing. Like, yeah. I've wrote so much in that. 
Yeah. And that, I'm the same way. Like I've, I've had aunts and uncles give me these books and everything like that, like growing your faith, these John Piper books and stuff like that. And I've been like, thanks. Yeah, yeah. And now I'll read some of them. I'm like, there's so much knowledge in here, you know, but you said something I really liked um, about just surrendering, you know, mm -hmm. and that's that satisfaction doesn't come until that it's just fully surrendered. You know, when you're fully just God have this, that's when you get that peace. It's not when you're, cause my dad always told me, I love this. He said, 99% obedience is still a hundred percent disobedience because God wants it all. For sure. And, uh, and uh, that really helped open my eyes to where I realized that if I'm struggling with something, it, it, I can't do this on my own. It has to be. Yeah. Him. Really <laughs> and my favorite thing in the world is like, I don't, I want people to realize like, yes, we are believers and we're both, I mean, you're going to be 20 soon, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I just turned 20. We're both, you know, he's about to be 20. We're in our 20s. We still have fun. Like, we don't just sit around and, like, I'm going to read. And, like, I'm not just, like, like no. a doctor constantly looking for somebody. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. it's, it's, it's things that happen, things that and that's That's what held me back for a long time is, like, Bro, the Christian life is boring, bro. Like I'm trying to like get no, involved. I like that. Whenever you get into it and you actually surrender, you realize like, oh my gosh, this is pretty awesome. The spirit thing. It's kind of like there's nothing better. And then when you find your when you surround yourself with other believers, that's when it goes to the next level, dude. Because they're challenging you, you're challenging them, and you're just building each other up, which is so awesome. That's what. That's what really I love. Surprised. Dude, hmm? that's why I love 747, dude. It's awesome. Like, yeah. I saw, like, I mean, there's hundred, like a couple, yeah, a couple hundred, nah, maybe, yeah, hundred fifty less. Two hundred. I don't know. There was a bunch of people at 747. It was super fun, and it was just like, just having people your age that are like going for the same thing is just so encouraging. Right. It really is. Um, and I've never that's a hard that situation. Yet. Huh? I don't know if you've been able to find that yet, like being in Oxford now, but yeah, I'm still working on that. I'm going to get plugged in at the uh, BCM on campus, uh, Ole Miss. So that'll be fun. Oh yeah. Um, and they got, they're huge, dude. They're going to have tons of stuff to do. So that'll be fun finding my group where I fit in good and everything like that. <laughs> I live with my cousin, but dude is gone 24 hey, seven. I'm telling you, you, Come back, uh, you come back anytime, man. Yeah, yeah, I might, I might. A state looks like it's happening over there, man. But what do people say, it's the place. No, nah, no, nah, it's not it's the move. Yeah, it's the move. That's what it is. The move, but <laughs> A state, the move, bro. Bro, that reminded me when I came back from Africa, I felt like an like old man because I was like, I came back and I said like sheesh, sheesh or something like that, you know. I was like. Babe, is that? I was talking to my girl. I was like, "Babe, is that still in? Like, do people still say that?" <laughs> no, now you're saying like, "Que la bombe." Yeah, now you're like, now you're talking "Muji, about. Muji, biepi moine to Santa." You know, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, we're gonna end with some prayer. I'm so glad that um, we could just get to catch up, dude. Man, I I'm so glad that you went to Africa, and I'm so glad that you got to experience that. It was just so awesome seriously yeah well i've i've had fun talking to you and uh i hope that some of the some of the things we said stuck out to you if not just catching up and uh getting to hop on the podcast again yeah on the podcast hey man get you some merch bro get you some yeah. you no know, dog man merch no i'm just playing you got it all right bro Dylan, Father, thank you so much for just these blessings on blessings to get to talk about you and uh, just to do it with a, a fellow brother, Lord. I pray that um, something we said today that you put on our hearts was uh, uh, we'll stick with somebody and they can use it to serve you, God. Let us be that Ananias that our job might seem small, but nothing with you is small, God. Thank you so much for everything you've done, keeping us safe, Lord. And I pray for the person that uh, really needed to hear this. Um, thank you for just everything you've done for us and dying on the cross. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Number one, you said blessings on blessings. I was like, really? Yeah, yeah. You said, and then you said, 
someone that needed to hear this and i was like hold on I need to hear that <laughs> yeah yeah all right man yeah all right. peace ah good job it's still recording but i'll i'll crop it oh i thought you stopped the recording